Hello everyone and welcome back to our ritual Mr. Virish here. We're holding you Mr. Virish Halek Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchus Tfilin and we will be learning today Mir Tzashem, Daf Memches, Ahmed Aleph, as well as a nice piece of Daf Memches, Ahmed Bez. So we pick up on the top of Memches. Well, actually, now that I think of it, uh, we have a little piece left on Mem Zion Ahmed Bez. My mistake. We have a little piece left on Mem Zayin Amid Bez, bottom line in the Shulchan Aruch, the words of the Ramah in the Haggah. So the Mechaber, yesterday here, at the end of Sif Yud Ches, was talking about different cases where um, part of a letter makes contact with another part of the letter where it should not. So for example, the Mechaber talked about a case where the bottom yud of the aleph touched the body of the aleph, or the upper yud of the aleph touched the body of the aleph. Now, the upper yud and the lower yud of the aleph always make contact with the central body of the aleph, but only through a very thin line that connects those yud to the central column of the aleph. What the mechaber meant was where a thick line connected the bottom yud or the upper yud to the central body of the aleph so that you no longer have the tzura sa'ois. You, don't, you no longer have two yudin that are connected to the central body. Instead, you have two broad pen strokes that are connected on the top and on the bottom, or one and not the other. So in either case, the Mechaber said, you can't just take a razor and scrape away the extra ink. That would be a problem of chak teichais. You would be forming the aleph by carving away the extra ink, that's chak teichais, that's a problem. Instead, the Mechaber said, we have to actually scratch away everything that was written bipsul. So you may have to scratch away the entire upper yud, the entire lower yud. The Mishnah said in some cases you would have to scratch out the entire aleph and start again. The Ramah says over here on the bottom line of Mem Zayin and Mebeis, V'chein hadin b'yudei hashin v'hatzadik v'ha'ayin v'ha'pei. We have these letters, a shin essentially has, depending on, on according to which minig it's written, either two yudin or three yudin. So you have a yud and then it goes with a a regal down to the bottom, another yud with a regal down to the bottom. So now, what happens, and I could I could draw this uh, very quickly over here. We'll make the yudin, one yud, uh, two yudin. Uh, we'll do the minig that the last one is a zion. Here you have a shin, right? So you have a yud connected to the bottom. You have another yud connected to the bottom. Now what happens if again, we end up with broad ink strokes that fill up underneath the yud going down to the body? So now look what I did by the first one over here. Instead of having a yud with empty space underneath it and then a thin connecting branch down to the bottom, I filled it all in with ink. So that would be the case of the yudin of the shin. You could envision the same thing with a tzaddik. A tzaddik has two yudin on top and two thin connection points going down to the bottom. What happens if underneath those yudin it becomes filled in with broad strokes? The ha'ayin, the same thing by the ayin, the ha'pei, or the pei, where the pei has a yud on its inside. So I just did this in a stick figure, but you have that yud that's on the inside. It's supposed to have the tsura of a yud. See, I made it to a yud now, upside down, of course, but a yud. What happens if it gets filled in with a broad stroke and connected to the gag with a broad stroke like so? In all of those cases, continues the, the Ramah, if they become attached to the body of the letter with instead of a thin connecting line but a broad stroke, it's the same halacha. Says the Mishnah Rais Katan Sadik 
So that instead of having the form of a yud and then a thin connection branch, it becomes a straight, broad stroke. So that it no longer has the tzuras ha'ois of a yud. We're not worried about if the connecting line got a little bit thick. Our problem is that instead of a yud and then a connecting line, we have one broad stroke so that you no longer have the tzura of a yud. You have the same issue with the inner yud of the pay. The same halacha would apply, says the Chavetz Chaim, in regal asmali shal atuf, if the left hand leg of a tuf, which is kind of like an upside down inverted vav, nase yashar, velo yoytze lamata lechutz, the, the tuf, The tough, the left hand regel, it has to have a piece sticking out. What if instead of having a piece sticking out, that whole regel becomes one very thick line? So you no longer have the piece sticking out. The Lavushe Srod wants to know why we even have to scratch away this ink. He says, really, you, all you have to do is add on ink and write a new yud, let's say, at the top of the shin, if it got filled in. So extend the gag of the yud. If you could recreate the necessary tzuras ois, if those vavs that got filled in and became broad strokes could be recreated by taking a pen, by taking a colmus, a quill, and adding ink onto it, and through ksiva making the proper tzura, so then the prima gadam implies that that would be okay. Of course, all of these different forms of correcting letters that we're discussing are only negaya if you didn't now continue. If you didn't continue writing the tefillin, and then you went back to go ahead and fix the problem, then you would have a problem of shaloi kesidron. So when we say that you could employ all of these types of repairs, that's only if you didn't write further. If you already wrote further, you're going to have a kisidron problem. Okay. Now, we're on the top line, Sif Yud Tes, where we get a little bit into easier territory than what we've had until now. Says the Machabra if you test. Betchilas haksivo. When the cipher sits down to begin writing the tefillin, Yoimar befiv. He should make a verbal statement and he should say, Ani kaisev l'shem kedushas tefillin. I am now going to write l'shem kedushas tefillin, having in mind I'm writing it for the purpose of the sanctity of tefillin. Milavadze, and then besides that verbal statement that he makes at the outset of the writing of the Tfilim, Bechal Pam Shekhoisev Azkara, whenever he comes to write a Shem Hashem, Tsarach Loimar, he has to state Shekhoisev Lishem Kedushas Hashem, that he's writing the name of Hashem, Lishem Kedushas Hashem, having in mind with the intent of the sanctity of of Hashem's name. So we have two verbal statements that the Mechaber says here, the cipher has to make when he writes Tfilin. The first one is that before he begins to writing the, before he begins writing the Tfilin at all, he has to make a verbal statement that he is now writing Tfilin L'Shem Kedushas Tfilin. Then, when he continues to write the Tfilin, every time he comes to a shame Hashem, he has to stop and he has to make a verbal statement that he's writing the shame Hashem, L'Shem Kedushas Hashem. Okay, let's stop here a second and go into the Mishnah Says the Mishnah is cut in Tzadik Beis, Betchilas. The Mechaber says, when does the cipher make this statement? 
in the beginning, in the beginning of the writing of the film, says the Mishnah Dem af ois achas shaloi niktav l'shem tefillin. You have to do this all the way at the beginning of the writing, because if you waited and you wrote even one letter of the tefillin shaloi l'shem kedushas tefillin, then the tefillin are puzzle. V'loi mahani ha'avaras kolmus l'shma. Now you might think, okay, so let's say I started writing the tefillin and I wrote a couple of letters and I forgot to make my statement that I'm writing it l'shem kedushas tefillin. So now I'll say I'm writing this L'Shev Kedush Tefillin and I'll take the quill and I'll write over those letters. Says the Mishnah you cannot do that. It would not be effective to merely now make the statement and pass the quill over the letters a second time doing it L'Shma. Why doesn't that work? Well, the reason that doesn't work, L'Chaira, this is brought down in the Shach. You see that the Mishnah Bura sends us to Yeridea Reish Ayin Vav Sif Beis. Yeridea Reish Ayin Bey, Reish Ayin Vav is Hilcha Sefer Torah. And in Hilcha Sefer Torah over there, Reish Ayin Vav Sif Beis, the Shach says this, Benegea to Hilcha Sefer Torah. You cannot just write over the letters of the Sefer Torah, writing them L'Shem Kedushas Sefer Torah. Why? Because that would be Ksav Al Gabe Ksav. You're writing over something which is already written, and Ksav al Gabi Ksav is not considered to be a Ksiva. So the fact that you passed the quill over the letter a second time, that does not equal that you wrote the letter Lushma. The first time you wrote it, that's when you wrote it, and you didn't write it Lushma. When you pass the quill over it a second time, that's not a writing. Continues the Chavat Chaim here in Ois Tzadik Tzadik Beis, and he says, Utechilas. When the Mechavah says that you have to do this Betechilas HaKsiva, at the beginning of the writing, Ritzayin Eloimar, what the Mechaber wants to say is, Techilas kol ha-parshiyos. Before you begin to write any of the parshiyos of the tefillin. So you have an order for a pair of tefillin from Ruvain, and now you're sitting down to start doing the writing on Ruvain's tefillin. So before you start all the parshiyos, Yomar, you say, Ani kaisev parshiyos elu l'shem kedushas mitzvah tefillin. I am writing all of these parshias l'shem kedushas tefillin. Umahani ze midina, and this verbal statement would be effective al pidin. Afilu im hifsik bena parshias, even if you take a break between writing the parshias. So let's say you went ahead to start uh, writing the the parshias of of uh, of somebody's tefillin. You started writing. So the first parsha is the parsha of Kadesh. Kadesh Li Kol Bachar. Now it's a big order. It's a whole set of tefillin, right? So you have to write four parshias for the Shalyad, four parshias for the Shalroish. So you started and you, you decided that you're sitting down to write the Shalyad. So you have to start writing the parsha of Kadesh. So you make a statement and you say, Ani Kaisev Parshias Elu. I am going to write all of these parshias. So that's eight parshias, four for the Shalyad, four for the Shalrosh. I'm going to write them all L'Shem Kedushas Tefillin. After you finish writing the parsha of Kadesh, you take a break. And then later you come back to write the parsha of Ayaki Yiviyacha. That's okay, Al Pidin. Since your verbal statement covered all of the parshias, even if you take a break, Me'ikar Adin says the Mishnabura, that would be okay. Now, it's interesting that the Mishnah does not give us a source for this halacha. Usually you would kind of expect to see an ice for the Sharetzion over here, and you would see a source, but there isn't one. So, taking a look in your Yerdeya, Simon Reishai, and Dalad, in Hilchas Sefer Torah, we find that the Mechaber says this in the context of a Sefer Torah. The words of the Mechaber are, Tzarech sheyoymar ha the Sefer has to state, when he begins to write a Sefer Torah, he has to say, Sefer Zeh, this Sefer Torah, Ani Kaisev, I am writing, L'Shem Kedusha Sefer Torah, Umaspek L'Chal HaSefer. And that suffices for the entire Sefer Torah. 
Now certainly a Sefer does not write a Sefer Torah in one sitting. Sefer takes many, many, many sittings for a Sefer to write a Sefer Torah. As long as he makes one verbal statement at the beginning of the writing at that Sefer Torah, and he says, I'm writing this Sefer Torah, L'Shem Kedusha Sefer Torah, that suffices for the entire Sefer Torah. And I assume the Chavetz Chaim is taking the halacha over here by Hilchas Tfilin from the Mechaber in Hilchas Sefer Torah. So, so too by Tfilin. If he sits down and he says, I'm writing all of these parshas, L'Shem Kedusha Tfilin, so that one statement will cover all eight parshas. However, the Mishnah Baruch continues and he says, Ach, Mikamakaim, nevertheless, Taiv Yaiser, it would be better, Sheyoimar Tchilas Kal Parsha, that at the beginning of each Parsha, he should state that he is writing Lashem Kedushas Tfilin. Aiskan Sadi Gimel says the Mishnah Baruch, the Mechaber said, Betchilas Haksiva. Says the Mishnah Baruch, near it, it would appear, Dehuadin Betiko Na Oisiyais. We said that there are certain repairs where you could go back after the writing was completed and you could make repairs. If we had two letters that came into contact with each other in a way where you did not lose the tzirasa oisiyos. So like we discussed yesterday, let's say the cipher wrote the word loy, lamid vav, and you have a thin connecting line going from the base of the lamid to the base of the vav. You could take a razor and you could scratch away that connecting line and now the tefillin will be kosher. And that kind of repair, there's no problem of shaloi kesidron. So you could go back and make that type of repair even after the tefillin were completed. Says the Chavetz Chaim over here, this issue of lishma is not only on the ksiva, but even on a repair of that nature. Before the cipher makes that repair, he should say that he is doing it l'shem kedushas tefillin. Since without that repair, the tefillin are puzzle. Since it's not, it's interesting that the Mishnah wrote this, by the way. The, I find the phraseology of the Mishnah over here interesting. When it comes to separating oisiyos, the reason the tefillin are puzzle is because the oisiyos are not mukav gvil. They're not surrounded, fully surrounded by blank parchment. Not because they don't have the tzuras ois. The only thing I could think is that the what the Mishnah Bruis, the Mishnah is coming to say that you need lishma when you scratch away to separate two letters. But we only find lishma by ksiva. We only find lishma the re- requirement of lishma when you're actually creating letters. When you scratch away, you're not creating the letters. If you were, it would be a problem of Chak So obviously, when we scratch apart, let's say, the Laban and the Vav, we're not creating the Laban, we're not creating the Vav. That's the whole reason why it's okay and it's not Chak because the Laban is already there and the Vav is already there. It's only a problem of Mukaf Gvil. But to take away the technical problem of Mukaf Gvil, who says you need Lishma? So my guess is that the Mishnah is kind of walking a tightrope over here, and he's saying that you need Lishma when you scratch apart two letters, because even though it's really only a technical problem of not being Mukaf Gvil, still it's, it doesn't have the Tzuras Ha'ois Karoi. The, the, the requirement of Mukaf Gvil is, partially at least, because of Tzuras Ha'ois. Why do you need Mukaf Gvil? You need Mukaf Gvil because... If it's not Mukav Gvil, right, contrast. When you write a letter, you write a black letter on a white cloth, you have the contrast between the letter and the cloth. When a letter is not Mukav Gvil, then at that point you don't have the contrast. If you don't have the contrast, then essentially at that point you don't really have the Tzuras Ha'ois. So to some extent, when you scratch the letters apart, you are creating the Tzuras Ha'ois. Enough, says the Mishnah Berurah, that it requires Lushma. Okay, ice cut and tzaddik dalit. The mechaber said, "Yoimar, you have to make this verbal statement. You can't just think it. You have to make a verbal statement." Ani kaisev l'shem kedushas tefillin. Says the mishnah bura. Ice cut and tzaddik dal yoimar v'em achar kaisev. Let's say somebody else is doing the writing. Let's say you started out, and when you started writing the parshas, you said, "Ani kaisev parshas elu l'shem kedushas tefillin." Then you stopped and you handed off the job to another cipher. 
So says the Mishnah Ruv, if a second cipher is going to take over the job and he's going to be writing, he also is going to have to make a verbal statement that he's doing it Lishma. Even if this cipher is only starting, he's picking up the job in the middle. So when you started the job, you already made a verbal statement that it's being done Lishma. The second cipher never made that statement. So the second cipher has to make his own statement. Now let's realize. Why is it that at least certainly with the Evid, you could get away with making one statement in the beginning, and even if you're mafsik, you don't have to make a new statement? The reason is because of a concept that we've already seen many times, which is kal ha al das hu Whenever somebody does something and he takes a break and then he continues doing it, we assume that he's doing it on this with the same mindset that he started the job. If you started a job writing something, L'Shem Kedush Tfilin, then you took a break. When you go to pick up and continue, we assume you're still doing it, L'Shem Kedush Tfilin. Kala Oisa, whatever you're doing, Al Das Rishonehu Oisa. You're doing it based on the same mindset that you had when you started. But if a second cipher is picking up the job in the middle, he had no Das Rishayna. He's not covered by your verbal statement. So for him, this is now the beginning. So he has to make his own statement. Aiskat and Sadik, the Makabi said that this has to be a verbal statement, befiv, you need to verbalize it with your mouth. Says the Mishnabura Valaisagi Ba Mahshava. A Mahshava is not enough. So if somebody will come and say, you know, I saw the cipher writing the Tfilin, I saw him, you know, when he sat down to start, he never said he was doing it with Shame Kadusha's Tfilin. You'll go ask the cipher, and the cipher will say, Yeah, 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 I, I didn't say it, but I had it in mind. I did it with Shame Kadusha's Tfilin. Says the Chavetz no. Even b'diyeved machshava is not enough. Now, I just want to point out, and we're going to see this later on Amid Beis. There's a lot of halachas that we have been learning here in Tefillin that all point to one very important concept, and that is, you really should try to know the cipher that wrote your tefillin, or at least buy the parshas of your tefillin from somebody who knows the cipher who wrote them and could attest to his Yerushamayim. You see, you could take the parshas of the tefillin and you can look them over with a microscope and they could have the most beautiful ksiva in the world and you could show them to 20 cipherim to go over them and you could check them with 30 computers. But you don't know if they were written lishma. How do you know? You don't know if they were written lishma. You don't know if they were written kisidron. You could you could inspect the tefillin as much as you want. You don't know if they were written kisidron. So no, there's no way, there's no way to check the tefillin for the year shamayim factor of the cipher. You need to trust the cipher that he wrote it kisidron. You need to trust the cipher that he wrote it lishma. And here you see even B'dyevet. So imagine a cipher. I want you to imagine for a minute. A cipher sat down and he spent half his day writing the majority of a, of a, of a shalyad. And then he's near the end of the shalyad and he says to himself, wait a second. I never said that I'm writing it lishma. I remember I sat down and I had the kumus and I had the parchment and I had the dyoy and I had everything set up to start. And I was about to say, And then my phone rang and I got into a five minute phone conversation and then I hung up and I started writing. And I never say that. That parsh is puzzle. And there's no way to make that parsh a kosher. There's no Havaras HaKolmus. There's no, there's no Kula Abidievit to be Saimachan. It says right over here, Voloisagi B'machshava, Af B'dievit. Brings it down from the Elia Rabbah, the Prima Godim. Even B'dievit is not kosher. Unless the cipher is a Yerei Shamayim. You're never going to know. I know the cipher that wrote my tefillin. I know the cipher that wrote all of my children's tefillin. I know the cipher that wrote all of the mezuzahs that I have on my doors. I know he's Yerei Shemayim. I remember at the time, some people were asking me, 
uh, is that the most beautiful ksav? I can get you a nicer ksav from, from a cipher. I know, you know, there's a famous cipher. I, uh, I know this ksav, that ksav. I know this fellow. I know his Yerei Shemayim. And, and that's more important than anything else. The, the niceness of the ksav is a keli van veyu. But if it has the tzuras ha'os, it's kosher. It's not l'shma, it's not kosher. If it's not kisidra, it's not kosher. Ois kan tzadik vav, ani kaisev. The cipher has to make this statement. Ani kaisev parashiris elu l'shem kedushas tefillin. Yesh shekosim with the Chavetz Chaim says, there are those that write, the nochein sheyoymar oz gamkein, it would be proper to also say at the outset of the writing of the Trillin, to make an addition, not only to say, Ani Kaisev Parshis Elu Lushem Kedushas Trillin, that I'm writing these Parshis Lushem Kedushas Trillin. There's another statement that you should add on. The Chal Askarois Shabai, and all of the names of Hashem that there are in the Trillin, Lushem Kedushas Hashem, I'm writing them Lushem Kedushas Hashem. Why? Why should you add this on? Remember what the Mechaber said. The Mechaber said there are two verbal statements that you need. One is at the outset of the writing. I'm writing all of these parshas As far as l'shma of tefillin, that one verbal statement <coughs> covers the entire writing of the tefillin, even if you take breaks in the middle. But then there's another verbal statement you make, and that is that before you write the name of Hashem, every time you come to a shame, you have to say, you have to say, um, uh, you have to say, I need kaisev Hashem, l'shem kedusha Hashem. That you have to do by every shame. Now brings the Mishnah over here from this Yesha Kosvu, that when you first start writing the tefillin, say, I'm writing all the parashas l'shem kedushas tefillin, and I'm going to write all the names of Hashem l'shem kedushas Hashem. This way, if in the middle of writing the tefillin, you forget by one of the shemois to say that you wrote it, l'shem kedushas Hashem, b'dyeved, you're covered. V'ayin b'bir alacha, and he sends us to the Bir Alacha Dibra Mascha Betchilas. Let's take a look at that Bir Alacha near the bottom of Memches Amad Aleph over here. Bir Alacha Dibra Mascha Betchilas. I am Mishdebura. Kavit Chaim says, take a look at the Mishdebura. Bemasha Kosav at that which I wrote. The Nachain Sheyoimar that it would be proper to say the Chal Askaray Sheboy that all of the names of Hashem that I'm writing in the Tefillah and I'm writing Lishem Kedushas Hashem. Where does he get this from? Says the Bir Alacha, Cain Kasav Ataz Biyaradea, Reish Ayin Dalid, Sif Aleph, Sif Katan Aleph. This is based on a Taz in Hilcha Sefer Torah, who suggests that at the beginning of writing the Sefer Torah, the Sefer should say that he's going to write all the names of Hashem in the Sefer Torah, L'Shem Kedush Hashem. Hey, we are here, Primagodim Bepoi. The Primagodim brings down this Taz from Hilcha Sefer Torah over here in Hilcha's Tulin. And he says, do the same thing by Hilchas Tum. Vikasav, and he writes, the Prima Godim, Dilachathila, Gama Taz Maida, Titzarch Bakal Pam Lakadeshaz Kara. Lichathila, the Taz agrees to the Machaber that every time you're gonna write the name of Hashem, you have to say that you're writing that shame, Lashem Kedushas Hashem. When the Taz says that you should make a statement in the beginning of the Tefillin, or the beginning of the Sefer Torah, that you're writing all the names of Hashem, L'Shem Kedusha Hashem, he's not saying that you could replace the individual statements along the way. No, L'Chadchila, you have to say before each shame that you're writing that shame, L'Shem Kedusha Hashem. After Kiddush B'Tchil Saksiva, even though you said in the beginning that you're writing them all, L'Shem Kedusha Hashem, the Taz is only giving this etza to cover you b'dyevet. L'chathchila, you got to say it before the writing of each shame. But he wants to cover b'dyevet. If the cipher forgot to say it before one shame, 
So then Bidiyevit is covered by the statement that he made in the beginning that he's writing all the Shemais, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem. And says the Bir Alacha, Ula Pella, he says it's really a Pella, it's a wonder, Shaloi Hevi, that the Prima Godim doesn't bring the Halechev Chamudais, Behilcha Sevet Terapolik. There's actually a Lechev Chamudais that argues on the Taz, the Sever, and the Lechev Chamudais holds, that feel the Eved Mahani. The Lechev Chamudais is not happy with the Taz's Eitzah. He says that, no, it doesn't work. If you didn't say that you're writing this shame, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem, the Lechem Chamudai says, this statement that you made in the beginning of the Tefillin, that you're writing all the shame is L'Shem Kedusha Sashem, is ineffective. So the Lechem Chamudai is not even masking to the Taz, but the Evet. But even the Taz only meant to be the Evet. He didn't mean it like a Tchila. Vayin b'birke Yosef b'yaradeya shamachmer bazeh. We have a Birka Yosef who's Machmer like this Lechem Chamudais, and he holds that it doesn't even work with the Evet. However, Val Kolpanim, nevertheless, says the Chavetz Chaim, near Ali, it appears to me, Dem Yesh Loi Safik Be'ez Hashem, I Kidei Shaloi. The Mishtabru is Machriya over here in the Bir Alacha, that you could rely on this verbal statement at the beginning of the writing, that you're writing all of the Shem, Yisleshem Kedusha Hashem, to cover you on a suffolk. If later on when you were writing, you are, you're masupic. Did I say that I was writing that shame? I don't remember saying it. I'm masupic. But you know for sure that at the beginning of the writing, you said, I'm writing all of the askaras of shame, kedusha, ashem, the yesh lahakal. Then you could be makal. So it turns out over here, based on the Bir Alacha, that when the Mishnah Brewer says that you should add this statement, that I'm writing all the shame is L'Shem Kedusha Sashem to cover you with the Eved, he doesn't mean, he's, he's being machriya here in the Bir Alacha, that it covers you not with the Eved when you know for sure that you did not say that you're writing the shame, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem. It covers you with the Eved in a suffix. If you have a suffix whether or not you said before the shame that I'm writing it L'Shem Kedusha Sashem, then you could rely at the statement that you made on the outset. But if you know for sure, he doesn't say that in the Bir Alacha. He's vague in the Mishnah Brura, but in the Bir Alacha, he doesn't say that it covers you for that. Ice cut in Sadiq Zayin. The Mechabah said, Bechol Pam. Every time you go to write a shame, every time, you have to make this statement that you're writing the shame, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem. Says the Mishnah of him, Kaisif Shteas Kareis Pali Hesik. Let's say you're writing the Shloish Esrei Midois. So it says Hashem, Hashem. So you're writing one shame right after the other. Dai B'Kidush Echad. Then it's enough to make one statement. I'm writing the shame, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem, and that will cover both Shemas, since there's no Hesik. Okay. Now we go to the Ramah. Third line down the middle of the line. Says the Ramah. The Mechaber said that by each shame, you have to say that you're writing the shame, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem. The Yeshayimim, the Ramah says, there are those that say, Desagi, that it is sufficient. It's enough if when you write the Shemais, you have in mind that you're writing the shame, L'Shem Kedusha Sashem, but you don't make a verbal statement. Since when you started writing the tefillin, you made a verbal statement that you're writing the tefillin, L'Shem Kedusha tefillin, now when you write the shame Hashem, as long as you have a machshava, as long as you have in mind that you're writing the shame Hashem, the shame kedusha Hashem, you don't need a verbal statement. Why? Because you you do have b'machshava that you're writing the shame kedusha Hashem, and at the outset of the writing of the tefillin, you made a verbal statement that you're writing the whole tefillin the shame kedusha tefillin. How does that work? Let's take a look at the uh, mishnah but you know what? Let's go further in the Ramah first. V'yesh lahakel b'dieved. 
The Ramah says that in the Evan you could be Mekel. Says the Mishnah is cut in Sadiches. Betchilas Haksiva. Since at the beginning when you started writing the Tefillin, you made a verbal statement that you're writing the Tefillin L'Shem Kedushas Tefillin. Right? Says the Mishnah Rur. What was that statement? Shu Kaysev L'Shem Kedushas Tefillin. Va'af. You didn't say at the beginning of the writing of the Tefillin that you're writing the name of Hashem, L'Shem, Kedushas Hashem. Remember, the Mishnah said that that's an Eitz Toiva. The Mishnah said that you should, at the outset, also say that you're writing all the names of Hashem, L'Shem, Kedushas Hashem. But the Mechavit did not say that you have to do that. The Mechavit said that when you start writing the Tefillin, you have to say, I need Kaysef Pachi Yaseinu L'Shem Kedushas Tefillin. So the verbal statement that the, the Ramah is relying on here is the verbal statement that you made at the beginning of the writing of the Tefillin, that you're writing the Tefillin L'Shem Kedushas Tefillin. Based on that statement, the Ramah is saying, now, if you didn't make a statement that you're writing the Shem Hashem, L'Shem Kedushas Hashem, but you had it in mind, it's enough. So now says the Mishra, why? The verbal statement that you made at the beginning of the writing of the Tefillin had nothing to do with Kedushas Hashem. It only had to do with Kedushas Tefillin, not Kedushas Hashem. So the Mishnah Bruce says, After lo yiske batchil Kedushas Askaris, you never said anything about Kedushas Hashem. Sagi, it's enough. To become akam arei yiske l'shem Kedusha. Because you did say that you're writing l'shem Kedusha. Sanctity. Now you said l'shem Kedushas Tefillin. You didn't say l'shem Kedushas Hashem. But at least you had in mind that you're writing l'shem Kedusha. That combined with the fact that you had a machshava before you wrote the shame that you're writing it, shame kedushas Hashem, that's enough. Avo, however, says the Mishnah im gam If even in the beginning you never made a clear verbal statement that you're writing l'shem kedushas tefillin, rak be machshava ba'alma, you only had a machshava. Oisha ato likideish as askaris afilu be machshava. Or if now when you're writing the shame. You didn't have in mind that you're doing it l'shem kedushas Hashem. I feel a bit the eved la You wouldn't be yotza even with the eved. Ice cut and sadik test. The Ramah said you could be makel with the eved. Ava lechatchila, but lechatchila. Sarech loymar beferish pachal pam shekaysev askara lechatchila. Certainly, you have to say every single time before you write the shame Hashem l'shem kedushas Hashem. Even if you made the additional statement at the beginning of writing the tefillin that you're writing all the names of Hashem, L'Shem, Kedushas, Hashem, every time you come to a shame, you have to say, L'Shem, Kedushas, Hashem, V'chein Pasko HaAchreinim, and that's the way the Achreinim Paskin. So what's the takeaway over here? The takeaway over here from Sif Yud Tes is, that tefillin have to be written l'shem kedushas tefillin. Every single letter of the tefillin has to be written l'shem kedushas tefillin. In order to make it l'shem kedushas tefillin, you need a verbal statement before you begin writing. L'shem kedushas tefillin. If you didn't make that verbal statement, even if you had it b'machshava, it's possible even b'dievet. The verbal statement that you make works for the entire tefillin. Even if you take breaks in between, it works for the entire tefillin. The Mishnah said, Eitz HaToiva Kamash Molam. There's another Lishma that you need, and that is before every shame, you have to say that you're writing the shame, L'Shem Kedushas Hashem. Says the Mishnah be smart. When you start writing the tefillin, say that you're writing the tefillin, L'Shem Kedushas Tefillin, and that you're also going to write every single shame, l'shem kedushas Hashem. That will cover you so that b'dyevet, if later on you have a suffix, whether or not by one of the shemites, you said l'shem kedushas Hashem, but you know you had machshava l'shem kedushas Hashem, now you're covered between your machshava and the general verbal statement that you made at the beginning, says the Mishnah, you'll be covered b'dyevet. Okay. Last words of the Ramah we didn't do. 
So the bottom line of Memchet Saban Alf, let's just finish off the Ramah. Ukishabol and Namnem. The cipher gives instructions, the, the Ramah gives instructions to a cipher. If you feel like you're falling asleep, don't write. Well, Gishabal and Amnem, if you're starting to doze off, lo yichtoif. Don't write villain. Dana Kaisev, oz bekavana. If you're half asleep, you're not writing bekavana. So if you're half asleep, don't write villain. Now we turn the page to Bemchesam and Beis, and let's see Sifchaf. Says the Mechaber, Tzarech ledaktek b'chaserois v'yaserois. You have to be very careful about words that have missing letters and extra letters. What does that mean? So we know that there are um, there are words there are words that have um, a vav or yud that are not strictly necessary. Just want to see. How do you spell mezuzos? Well, there's two ways mezuzos could be spelled. It could be mem, zayin, and then a vav. Right? A vav with a, a dot in it. That would be an u, mezuzos. So you could have mem, zayin, vav, zayin, vav, saf. Or it could be mem, zayin, Zion, you don't need that vav because you could put the vowelization of a shuruk underneath the first Zion, and now the first Zion is a zoo. So mizu zois, you don't need that middle vav. You don't need a vav between the two Zions. Now in the Torah Doisha and in Tfilin, that word mizu zois in the parsha of Shema is written chasar. It's written without that vav. So that is a case of chaserois. That's a word that is missing a letter that is not technically required. So it's written as a chosar. The same thing you can have by an oi. You don't necessarily need a vav to make an oi. The same thing with an e. There's a yud. Do you need the yud or do you not need the yud to make the e sound? A chirik makes an e. You don't need it to be followed with a yud. So there are chaserois that are words that are written chosar. And there are Yaserois, which we usually call it Mole. There are words that are written Mole. Says the Mechaber Tzarek, Ledaktek B'chaserois V'yaserois. We have to be very careful with the words that are written Chazar and the words that are written Mole. Why? She'em chiser o yiter ois achas psulim. Because if we short one letter, if we write the Tefillah and we leave out even one letter, or we put in even one extra letter, psulim. Then the tefillin will be puzzle. V'nim and it will come out. Says the mechaber, Hamanichim Aisam, the person who puts on those tefillin, Mevarchim b'chal yoyim brachal of atala. Every day that he puts on those tefillin, he's making a brachal of atala. V'gam and furthermore, Shari b'chal yoyim b'loy mitzvah tefillin. Every day that he puts on those tefillin, he's not really putting on tefillin. So. All these days he's going without putting on tefillin. Venimtza, and it comes out, Einish HaSeifer Meruba, that the Einish of the Seifer who wrote these tefillin will be tremendous. The Seifer wrote deficient tefillin, their puzzle, he sold them to somebody. That fellow was putting on those tefillin, and for 30 years he's not putting on tefillin. Imagine, for 30 years he just, he's not wearing tefillin every day. And he's making brachas levatolis every day. Lachain therefore says the Mechaber. Tzarech liyos ma'oid yirei shamayim. A cipher has to be a real yirei shamayim. V'chareid l'dvar Hashem. Somebody who trembles and is fearful for the dvar Hashem. Hamisasek b'ksivas tfilin v'tikunan. A lot of people say, eh, you know, 
we have a teenager, we need uh, something for him to do, well, we'll train him to become a cipher. You know, a cipher has to be a real Yerei Shamayim and a Choreid Ludvar Hashem. Otherwise, it's a disaster. Let's take a look here at the Mishnah Brewer, who spells this out in the name of the Lavush so clearly and eloquently. But first, Mishnah Brewer is cut and cough. Chiser o Yiter. If you left out a letter or you added a letter, even if the word is not going to change the way you read it by the lack of the letter or the addition of the letter, like a mali or a chasar, like I told you by mezuzos, that middle vav, you know, putting it in or leaving it out doesn't change the pronunciation of the word. Still, if you put in that vav, it's fill an apostle. Ice cotton kofalaf, ice achas, even the addition to the subtraction of one letter. Fafiluim kaitse shal yud chaser ma'akev. Even if the little kites of the yud, either on the left or on the right, ma'akhlaik is vishainim, you leave out the kaitse shal yud, you don't have the tzuras ice of the yud. So you don't have a yud. You miss a letter. Fill in our puzzle. Kedisa menachas, chavtesa menalaf. Meruba. The oinish of the cipher is meruba. Melavad avon gezal achamur. Besides that he's causing somebody not to wear tefillin, and besides that he's causing somebody to make brachas levatolos, he's also a gazlan. He sold tefillin to somebody for fifteen hundred dollars. They're not tefillin, the apostle. Ice cutting could kuf gimel. A cipher has to be a chareid lidvar Hashem. He has to be fearful of the word of Hashem. Says the Mishnah Raisi lahatik pay. I saw it appropriate over here. To attach Lashain Halavush, the words of the Lavush, Hatsarik Ma'id in Yonenu, that are very germane to our topic. Dezel Lishainu, these are the words of the Lavush. Veloi Kimaisha Oisin Achshav Kama Seifrim, not what many Seifrim nowadays do. Shemanichim Naorim, where they take teenagers, Hamislamdim Lichtaiv Tfilin who are starting to, you know, they're starting out to learn how to write tefillin, k'day she'yargilum b'ksav, they give them tefillin to write, she'manichim na'orim ha'mislamdin, they allow children, teenagers, who are learning, lichtoiv tefillin, to write tefillin, k'day she'yargilum b'ksav, so that they should get used to writing. So the cipher has a 16-year-old apprentice, and he gives him cloth, and he says, here, you got a nice handwriting. Write me a shalyad. And then when this child, when this adolescent, finishes writing the parsha, Roya Seifer, the Seifer looks at it, if it was written kahalacha, he makes sure it's not missing any letters, he makes sure there are no additional letters. He makes sure you got the tzuras ois yais. He makes sure nothing's touching. So it's written kalacha. The sagi lebachi, and he's satisfied with that. Vachakach, and then manichin ois son bebatim. He takes those parshias and he sticks them into bottom. Umoichrin ois son and he sells them as tefillin. Umechashvin lehem asayfrim ois son amoyis b'schar alimud lana. So the sixteen-year-old wrote a parsha. The cipher checked it. Yeah, it's written kalocha. He sticks it into a shalyad. He sells the shalyad to somebody for $750. Now, really, you know, I didn't write it. Somebody else wrote it. A kid wrote it. But hey, I'm entitled to make money. I mean, after all, I'm teaching this kid how to be a cipher. Umarim lehem, he says over here, umechashvin lehem a cipher, moisan amois. They look at it that the money that they got paid for that shalyad, that's tuition. I got paid for teaching this kid how to be a cipher. We need cipher him, don't we? So yeah, it's true that I didn't write the parsha, and the guy thinks that I wrote the parsha. Really, a 16-year-old wrote the parsha. 
But hey, I'm entitled to charge for my services that I'm teaching a kid how to be a cipher. And I'm saving the world. I'm not doing mitzvahs. I'm helping Klal Yisrael. I'm training cipherim. Umarim lem pnei heter. Demar heter. Loimar to say, Hareinu bozeh ki goim lech hasodim im anoarim ha'aniim. Lelamid lehem alechas haksiva bechinam. Vim alechas Hashem. What do you mean? I'm doing wonderful work. I'm doing God's work. I'm taking a poor teenager. I'm giving him a parnasa. I'm teaching him how to be a cipher. And I'm making cipherim. So what do you mean? I'm a tzaddik yisoyed oil. I'm not wrong. I'm taking money. Says the Lavosh. Avalani oimer I say yatsas charam bev sedam. Whatever benefit there is in what they're doing, it is swallowed up by the hefsid, by the loss of what they're doing. Va'adarabah loy toivem oisim ba'amam. It's not a good thing that they're doing for Klal Yisrael. Ki hanar nar, because the adolescent is a teenager. Vein yadeh ben yamin al smaila, who doesn't know his left hand from his right hand. Vein loy shum kavana ba'ilam. And when he's writing the tefillin, he has no kavana at all. Rakhem kimisaskim baksiva liapes aksav. All he's doing is practicing handwriting to learn how to write nicely. But he has no machshav of lishma. He has no machshav of kedushas tefillin. He has no machshav of kedushas hashem. V'loy lishum kedusha v'shum kavanas mitzvah ba'olam. V'harei oynish asayfer meruba. The oynish of this cipher will be great. Shamachshelus abrios. He's being martial people. Because they're putting on tefillin that are puzzle. Because they're not written lishma. This is what I told you before. Even if you look at it, it looks gorgeous. You have a 15-year-old who's a child prodigy. He could write the most beautiful parsha in the world. Every cipher will look at it. And ooh and ah. But it wasn't written lishma. It's puzzle. V'loy oid k'day l'ashbiach es mekchai. And furthermore... The cipher, in order to get a good price for this fraudulent parsha, Yomer has cipher like Kyle, he'll tell everybody, yeah, I need Kisavtim, I wrote it. Well, but Kavani Kisavtim, sure, of course, I wrote it Lishma, what are you talking about? The Chaloisid Kane, Bavada Asidin, Lite Nesadin, the Lord says, anybody who does this is also Lite Nesadin, or the Kabbalon Chin Harbim Oid and Nebuchas the Chalilabav, and he said, they're going to be Makabal terrible ancient. Valeam Nemar, and on them the Pasuk in Yermia says, Oror Oise Meleches Hashem Remia. Cursed are those who do Meleches Hashem in trickery. Alkain, therefore, Yizar Kol Seifer, every Seifer should take care, V'yisrachek Mizeh, and distance themselves from such practices, V'toivloi, and it will be good for them. <laughs> because you have to realize, says the Mishnah Bura, the Lishman Ha'amar Eitzel Tfilin. When we speak about the requirement of Lishma by Tfilin, ain't a kavana Lishem Bala Tfilin. It's not like by a get. It has to be written Lishma Yom Lishma or Lishem Gerishin. That it has to be written for the man and it has to be written for the woman. So Lishma by Tfilin doesn't mean it has to be written for the person who's buying it. Come on, Gabi Get. It's Arach Lishem Ha'ish Ha'isha. Rak Lishem Kedushas Tfilin. It has to be written Lishem Kedushas Tfilin. Ayin Shom. V'siye Balzeh, and the Lavush concludes his words, and he says, Umin Aroi, it would be proper, L'mishi yesh kayach biyodai, for those who have the ability, L'manois kaisve tefillin muhuganim, to appoint seifrim to write proper tefillin, and muhuganim, they should be good people, and she emes, truthful people, soine betza, people who hate money, they hate profit. So they're not doing it. They're not looking out for money. Again, the guy who wrote most of a, a, a parsha, then he realizes that it's possible because he didn't make a statement that he's doing it with Shema. If he loves money, I don't know what he's going to do. But if it's a sine betza, he doesn't care. Bale Teira. They should be Bale Teira. Yerei Ali Kim. Vecharedim al Dvarai. Bechal Ir. We should have seifram of that type appointed in every city. Kemai Shem Emanim Shechtim Abaitkim. The same way we make sure to have shaykhtim that we can trust. Shaykhit Rabbi Isai is the same way. I don't care how many mashkichim you have standing next to a shaykhit. If you don't trust the shaykhit, you don't know that you're eating kosher. Why? Because one of the requirements, one of the psulim of shita is, is hadrasa. If you press, when a shaykhit shechts an animal, the knife has to do the cutting. 
You go back and forth with the knife, but if you press in with the knife, or even if you, when you're going back and forth, if you press down too hard, that's drisa, that's puzzle. Only the sheikhit knows if he did drisa or not. I don't care how many mashgichim are standing there watching. I mean, yeah, if the sheikh went like this, that the, the mashgich could tell. But there's a lot of drisa that the sheikh doesn't know, that the mashgich can't tell. So unless the sheikh is a Yerei Shemayim, you have no idea. So Lavush says, the same way you're appointing sheikh to Mabaitkim, you need Seifrim. Shaloyaminu l'chala Seifrim. You can't just trust all the Seifrim. Shein kavanosam elol harviach mamoin al yidei ksiva v'tikin yofa b'asiyas atfilim. Unfortunately, by the Seinu Arabim, there are Seifrim who are only in it for the profit. So they make sure to write nice. They make sure it looks good. But Kedusha, L'shem Kedusha Stfilon, L'shem Kedusha Sashem, who knows? Kisidron, who knows? V'af ki gam kavon azu toiva haisa liyapay sa mitzvah benoya. Certainly it's, it's commendable to have kavon to write beautifully. Zakeli van veyu. That's a zero after the Kedusha Satfilin. If you have the Kedusha Satfilin, then the Zekeli Van Vey was worth something. If you don't have the Kedusha Satfilin, the Zekeli Van Vey was worthless. And this they're not careful about. The cost of the Sefer Bar Sha'amar, the Sefer Bar Sha'amar writes, by the way, the Bar Sha'amar is the Baal Mechaber of the Torah Tamima, who is also, I believe, the son of the Arach HaShulchan. So the cost of the Sefer Bar Sha'amar, Yichtayv Oisiyais Tayvim Utimimais V'loi Shivurais. You should write, of course, good letters, complete letters, not broken letters. Uve Mitum, the writing should be done deliberately. Uve Kavana Gedoylen, with great intent of Kedusha. And don't rush. Oh, if I write more tefillin, the more tefillin I write, the more money I make. Because that profit will go to loss, and to disaster. And the rushing will cost you chas v'sham yu neshama. Ki yu machti yasarabim. V'chol mi shakaisi tefillin taivim u'kesherim kifi yechaltai. Anybody who writes good kosher at tefillin, according to his abilities, scharay kafal mechupal. His schar is tremendous. The nitzar al medina shel gehenim, and he is protected from gehenim. The kasa b'sefer chasidim simen samachay v'tzid kasa yibed eslad. When David Amelech writes the pasuk to Tehillim, v'tzid kasa yibed eslad, that his righteousness will stand for him for all eternity. Zeha mezaka or rabbin, that somebody who's mezaka the rabbin b'mitzvus. So a cipher who writes kosher with tefillin is mezakes arabim. Kigayin amalamid liyere Hashem tikun tefillin l'sakin l'acherim. Somebody who teaches other yere yere shamayim to be good cipherim. Vayin b'simon l'amites masay adam roy lich to tefillin. In simon l'amites we will discuss when a person becomes roy to be a cipher to write tefillin. It's not a lightweight thing at all. Okay, we're going to stop over here. We'll continue next time. Mirza Hashem with Sif Chavalev. Thank you so much for joining me for Liban Atari. This is Liban Atari. Should be Megan against Klai Yisrael. The Rosh Hashanah should say Yeshua. The first Parnasah should do him to all those in need, and we should be zayich to see the Bias called Tzedek. Be Meherav Yamenu Amen. Be well.